Meanwhile, up here on the inspiration stage, we're going to explore whether constraints can actually inspire creativity and innovation with a session from Mindscape's founder, Jonathan Dominitz, who's back by popular demand after being here last year himself on the forum stage. Now, it's often believed that outstanding creative ideas are those that come from a place without constraints or when constraints are broken or ignored. Here to tell us more about the golden constraints behind the most creative and innovative campaigns, please welcome now to the stage, Jonathan Dominitz. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here to talk to you about constraints and how they can uh, actually lead us to be even more creative and innovative. Now, let's admit it, although we understand and we heard, and I, I guess it's not the first time that we hear that constraints lead to creativity, most of us, we hate constraints. When we have constraints on the roads, when we have constraints at home and at, wo at work, we don't like them. And this is because our mind tend to see constraints and as an obstructive uh, way to do what we want. But if we listen carefully to what uh, Igor Stravinsky said, he said, the more constraints are imposed, the more one is frees one's own mind. And actually, the arbitrariness of constraints serve us to obtain better results and more precise. And this is very important. The more the constraints are precise and well-defined, it helps us to think better. So what I'm going to do here in this presentation is to, I will not try to convince you, but I will try to lead you to understand that if we embrace constraints, if we use them properly, it helps our mind to think better and to create better. But then again, the question is, how constraint inspire creative thinking? And more importantly, which constraints can lead us and can fuel us to innovative new ideas? So I'm going to pick on your mind, I'm going to use you, I'm going to ask you to uh, bear with me and to try to solve um, uh, some problems. But before that, just let me tell you briefly what we do at Mindscapes. At Mindscapes, we look into the most creative and effective ideas which are created um, in marketing, in advertising, communication, and we try to detect the recurring thinking patterns behind them. And we transform them into practical thinking tools which actually serve as well-defined constraint to creativity. So just to give you a hint, when we look at award-winning ideas from Cannes and from Spikes every year, more than half, 66% of the ideas that win awards, they share one of the common recurring thinking patterns that we were able to identify so far. But what is more interesting and shocking is that when you look only at the Grand Prix and the gold, the creme de la creme ideas, the number goes to 81. And it can tell us that there are several thinking constraints which can be seen as pattern that if we use them, we tend to think more sharply and more creatively. So I'm going to uh, present to you uh, a puzzle and I'm going to ask you to try to solve it. And behind this process of trying to solve a problem, a riddle, there is some principle of creative thinking that I hope we're going to discover it together. And this is a story of um, um, uh, an army that was assigned to climb uh, on high mountains behind the uh, uh, neighboring country and to display antennas of top of the mountains so as to capture the communication signals from uh, that country in order to prevent wars. So the task was to send a small bunch of soldiers during the night climbing on the mountain, displaying the antenna without being discovered, camouflaging it, and going back home at the same night without being discovered. So the antennas were very light and very powerful. 
And for a certain period, everything works well. The antennas uh, uh, capture the signals and transmit them back, and wars were prevented, and everybody was happy. But at a certain moment, they discovered a problem that they were not aware of before. During the winter, there were some strong uh, snow storms, and snow started to accumulate on the wings of the antenna. And because of the heavy snow, which freezes into ice, some of the antennas became too heavy and broke down. So they discovered once broke down, they couldn't function anymore. So they had to find a solution. They asked the company who produces them to find a solution, but there were severe, several severe constraints. The first one is that you cannot change the angle of the antenna because at that time, technology was such that only when it is horizontal, it works uh, well. You cannot add any more weight to the antenna. It must, you must use only what there is there already. You cannot shorten the pole because it would not transmit. The antenna had to be at a certain height. You can't use any new or other technology than the existing one. And you can't use a different material. It was the strongest uh, and the lightest material that technology had at that time. So I want to challenge you to try to bring solution to this problem. And again, take one or two minutes, think of a solution for yourself. The, I remind you, the task here is to learn something about what kind of ideas we bring to, the, to a problem, to a given uh, problem with constraints. So take one or two minutes, discuss it with your partner. How can you solve it using all those, the above constraints? Go ahead. I want each one of you to have at least one solution that you came up with and to bear it up in your mind. We're not going to hear your ideas, but I want you to reflect on your solution when I'll present to you uh, one more solution. So another solution that was found for this uh, problem by the company who produced it was without adding any more material to change the surface of the antenna. Originally it was flat um, and smooth surface and they decided to change it to add some, to cut some notches around the pole and to transform it into a rough surface so as when the snow falls in the winter and cover the wings of the antenna it also fall on the notches and when it freezes into ice, it becomes a whole thicker pole with a layer of ice around it and it supplies the needed support to the antenna as long as there, there is snow on the antenna. So if you reflect on this solution and you compare it with other solutions that you may have brought yourself to the question, you would see that there is uh, a new constraint here, a new principle of creativity, which is to use the problem as a resource for a new solution. Now, we heard about it before. It's not new. I'm sure I'm not the first person who tell you, look at problems as potential solutions, but see how counterintuitive it is. 
and think, reflect on the solution that you came up with, probably you thought the snow, because it is the problem, is something that we have to get away with. So you thought of some solutions of getting rid of the snow or neutralizing the snow or bringing some new element that would help you to uh, dissociate the snow from the antenna. Creative use of problem is a very sharp constraint that if we use it correctly, we can find new solutions, new innovations, without forcing ourselves to do something artificial. And let me just show you some examples. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Marmite, this typical British spread, but this is not a new campaign, but behind it there is embedded a very radical solution. They embraced the problem of the strong taste of the Marmite. They didn't hide it. Actually, they admitted it and created a whole new interesting approach to articulate a message where the problem is part of the definition of the brand. You either love it or hate it. It's so straightforward. It's so honest. It creates a lot of trust. If you haven't tried this product before, probably you would ask yourself, what do I feel about it? I want to try it. Why? Because the world is divided between lovers and haters, and I want to know where I'm standing. So admitting a problem can be a very powerful way to create trust, which is the number one currency of every given brand, and curiosity. What is this company and this product that admits that they have such a strong problem? Another famous example is Guinness, another British brand. Good things come to those who wait. When was the last time you heard a mega brand admitting his main problem, its main problem, and taking it to articulate the brand idea which lasted something like 15 years. Good things come to those who wait. It's quite courageous and quite unusual to take the number one consumption problem of people have to wait several minutes before they can drink their Guinness in a bar and to articulate a new brand perspective. So admitting a problem can be a very powerful way to create trust and sympathy and interest in a situation or in a marketplace where most brands, excuse me, I'm not talking about your brand, but generally speaking, brands are not so much trusted. In the US, 65% of people say that they distrust big companies, big brands, because they believe they don't tell them the truth. And if you are able to admit a truth in public and use it to articulate your brand perspective, then you are much more likely to gain trust and confidence from people. Let's see a very recent example, which won several heavy metals in Cannes this year. This is a campaign for Volvo. Volvo wanted to um, be part of the, of the uh, biggest football uh, contest in the world, but they didn't have the money to be there. So they thought, how can we use the Super Bowl, where all the big competitors will be there, without actually being there? So they created what they called, what was called later, the greatest interception ever, they opened a Twitter account, and they opened a contest. And the condition of the contest were such. If during the Super Bowl, one of the competitor car ads is on air, at that 30 seconds, if you go to Volvo and you tweet that you want to give a car for somebody you love, and why you want to give it, you might win the contest, 
and get a car for free to share it with that person. Look what happened. When you see a car commercial during the game, any car commercial, not Volvo, you can tweet using the hashtag Volvo contest. The interception was simple. Their commercials would give you a chance to win one of our cars for someone you love. Just tweet their name to Volvo during any car commercial. When Mercedes wanted you to look here, people immediately went here. When Lexus spent 4.5 million for this, Twitter looked like this. Shifting the social conversation to Volvo. With up to 2,000 tweets per minute every time their commercials aired, we changed the Super Bowl conversation from one loud 30-second roar to an ongoing conversation about Volvo that lasted the entire game. We were the only car company to trend both nationally and globally. So they weren't advertising on TV, they were letting all the other car companies do that for them. And just like that, their millions of dollars worth of car commercials turned into a social conversation about Volvo. Helping our XC60 to a 70% sales increase the month following the game, the highest in its segment. Amazing. Without advertising even once during the Super Bowl and using the problem of not having a budget to advertising the Super Bowl and using the other problem that their competitors have big budget, turning every commercial of competitors into a way to draw attention to Volvo, to change the conversation, and by thus increasing sales of Volvo in 70% the months after the Super Bowl. Amazing result. And another big winner in Cannes, probably you've seen it, the Geico. Uh, commercials, tapping on the problem that you have, the skip ad thing, the pre-roll ads before in YouTube that you have, you must watch them during only three or four minutes before you skip the ads and creating ads that were specially designed uh, that you cannot, you don't want to skip them because they are so peculiar, winning some golds and even a Grand Prix in Cannes this year. So, if constraints are forcing us to be creative, like problems, why not use self-imposed constraints in order to speed up the creative process? So the question is, can we impose intentionally, without anybody forcing us, some self-imposed constraints so as to channel our mind into an area which is very fertile with creative ideas. So we are talking about two kinds of constraint. One, inherent constraint, where constraints are inherent in the situation, and every brief uh, has its own inherent constraints. But at the same time, we can use self-imposed constraints, constraint that we impose ourselves in order to speed the process. I want to show you some more of the uh, patterns that we work with, which can be used as self-imposed constraint. And in order to do that, I'll share with you some uh, winning campaigns. And I want to ask you to try to identify what is the common constraint behind them. The first one, again, another big winner in Cannes this year, is the freshest fresh juice from Intermarché in France. To Marche, one of the largest supermarket chains in France, has launched the freshest fresh orange juice brand ever created. A brand whose name is in itself a proof of its freshness. A juice brand whose name is the exact time the juice was made. Yes, the name of the brand changes every minute with every bottle of orange juice made. People like the freshness of the juice, so much so that in the first three days of the campaign, our fresh orange juice sales multiplied by 4,600% per store, and overall in-store traffic increased by 25%. And the media like the freshness of the idea. 50 million media impressions were generated in the first three hours of the launch, and the hashtag le jus le plus frais, the freshest juice ever, has spread quickly over the web. 
Finally, at the very moment you're watching this video, a whole new brand of orange juice is actually being created. The freshest fresh orange juice brand ever made. So this is the first example. The second one is a campaign from a small company in Spain, which is a theater who produce comedies and, um, and um, um, yeah, all kinds of comedies. And they had a problem, people stop coming less and less to, to comedies and to stand-up comedies. And they wanted to find an interactive, new interactive way to engage with consumers. So they created the Paper Laugh. Paper Laugh, the first comedy shows where you only pay for what you consume. We fitted each seat with a facial recognition system that detects the smile and proposed the following deal to spectators. Entrance will be totally free. If the show produces no laughs, you don't pay anything. However, if you laugh, you have to pay for each smile. Each smile produced is worth 30 euro cents, something that in this day and age is quite a reasonable price. At the end of the show, the spectators could check their laughter account before paying and even share it on social networks. And so that no one would cry for having laughed more than they could afford, the maximum amount to pay was 80 laughs for 24 euros. The average price of the ticket increased by 6 euros. The system was covered by the main national media outlets, and this produced 35% more spectators. E okay, so an, an amazing innovation which won last year in Cannes a Grand Prix and it was voted as the bi biggest innovation of the year because it created a whole new currency how to interact with people based on how much they enjoy and not what is the worth of the product. Another great idea from Argentina is for an air conditioner um, uh, company who wanted to make a promotion during the hot summer uh, in Argentina and they created an idea which was called My Home is an Oven. In partnership with the Buenos Aires Ministry of Urban Development and Google Maps Technology, we developed a software program capable of measuring the sun's impact on every home in the city. By logging onto our website and entering an address, residents could calculate the exact amount of hours their homes were exposed to sunlight. The accumulated hours were then converted into a discount toward the purchase of a BGH air conditioner. The longer the exposure, the bigger the discount. With an initial investment of $40,000, we obtained a turnover of $14 million. But more importantly, we turned more than 49,000 ovens back into homes. Okay, and the fourth example, again, the Volvo idea, the great interception ever, it contains another self-imposed um, constraint. And my question to you now, if you look at those four creative ideas, creative innovation, the freshest fresh orange juice, paper laugh, my home is an oven, and the Volvo interception idea, can you identify here a very specific and well-defined pattern which can use as a constraint. They all do, creatively speaking, the same approach. They do something, although the ideas are different, the way of thinking is very similar. I want you to try to think, what is the similarity here? And because we don't have enough time, I'll show it to you. We call it dynamic connections. They all connect things that were not connected previously. And the constraint in dynamic connection is to identify what are the existing connections between the variables of the systems to suspend and abolish one of them in order to connect to create a new dynamic connections between things that were not connected previously. The creating the dynamic connection is not just in order to innovate, it is to innovate, but the purpose is to convey the brand idea in a powerful, surprising, 
and entertaining way. So in the freshest fresh orange juice, for the first time, they created a new dynamic connection between the name of the brand and the time of production. That is, abolishing Intermarché is not anymore the brand. The brand is the precise hour and minute of squeezing the juice, which creates a whole kind of innovative way, and people would like to try it. Can I buy the freshest fresh orange juice in the shop today? In the paper laugh, for the first time, you don't pay a fixed price, you pay the price which is corresponding, which is connected to how many laughs you had during the show, which is very innovating. My home is an oven. For the first time, the amount of discount was connected to the hours that your specific apartment is exposed to the sun during the summer in Argentina. Again, a very engaging way because all of a sudden, if you, even if you don't want to buy a con air conditioner today, you want to tr check it out and see how much you would go to their website to, to be able to calculate how much your hour, your apartment is connected to the sun. So the whole innovative idea here. And in the Volvo idea, for the first time, they created a contest, a promotion, which is not unlimited in time, but it is connected to the minutes that their competitors screen their ad in the Super Bowl. So the only way to enter the Volvo competition was to tweet your message during the advertisement of their competitor in the Super Bowl, which created a self-imposed uh, constraint, which led people to do it exactly during the Super Bowl competitor commercial, thus converting the conversation from Mercedes, from Audi, from uh, Chevrolet into Volvo at the same time their competitors were on air. So when we do, and if we want to try this constraint, what we have to do is to make a distinction and to write down what are the internal variables of a system. The internal variables are all the variables which are completely under the control of a manufacturer, meaning the time of production, the price, the size of the product, the color of the product, uh, the ingredients, and so on. Everything which is full control of the manufacturer on the one hand, and on the other hand, to write down all the external constraints, which are the constraints which we, and external variables, which are the variables that we don't have a control, but we want to influence. Who buys it? When do they buy it? What is the temperature of drinking the drink? Do they drink it alone or do they share it? All the variables which affect the consumption but over which, by definition, we don't have control. And then take the internal variables and the external variables and try to match them. And ask yourself, is there a connection today between an internal variable X, external variable Y, if there is one, try to abolish and to change it. If there isn't, let's create one. So it helps us, it gives us a precise way to innovate in a systematic way, which helps us to create amazing idea. For example, we can play with two internal variables. The name of the brand is under our control. We can control, we can change it. The time of production is our control. So both are internal variables which so far were not connected, but here for the first time, they are connected. Similarly, the amount of love, an external variable, not in our control, but the price is in our control. Let's create new dynamic connection. The amount of our an apartment is exposed to the sun, external constraint, external variable, we don't control it, and the promotion, the amount of promotion is something that we do control. I'll skip it because we have a small uh, amount of time left for us, another constraint. Let's see a different kind of uh, self-imposed constraint, again, by some award-winning ideas. The first one is uh, a new application from the US uh, for Oscar Mayer, one of the leading, the leader bacon brand in the US, which they created for the first time an application which is connected to a wake-up 
uh, alarm clock which wakes you up in the smell of a bacon. Americans love it. It was a huge success. You can see the figures here, the impact on sales, the impact on awareness, and it was a very innovative idea which won them uh, some lions earlier this year. I won't show you the ad because we don't have time. Another idea coming from a small company in Germany last year who want organization, who wanted to create donations for poor population in the third world, uh, and they call it the social swipe. Take a look. So Miserior developed the first poster that accepts credit cards, the social swipe. When a card is swiped, the resulting donation can provide daily bread for a family in Peru or help an imprisoned Filipino child return to a normal life, all for just two euros. Although it sounds simple, synchronizing the digital poster with a complex card verification system was a challenge. When the card was swiped, a secure process quickly authenticated it and activated a film sequence on screen. This all appeared streamlined thanks to specially developed software. And the third idea is an idea that came from a small pizza house uh, brand in Dubai who wanted to sell more pizza for a loyal customer and attract new customers. Take a look, and again, the question that I ask you here is not have you seen this ad before, probably you have, but what do those three ads share in common? What's the common constraint? Help you. Yeah, I want one veggie pizza, mushroom and peppers only, please. Okay, okay. Uh, so one pizza, mushroom, pepperoni, sir. No, mushroom and peppers only. Yes, 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 pepperoni. Okay, but what size you want? Adesso ti insegno una ricetta. Dammi pure un po' di aglio, cipolla, basilico, salcici, peperoni. Che bella pizza che so fa. Ma che vuole di mangiare? So, here's how we cooked it up. The VIP fridge magnet is delivered directly to your door. It's loaded with your pizza preference based on your order history. Set it up once with your Bluetooth using any mobile on any platform, including that old Sony. Then you just push the button and enjoy your favorite pizza. An SMS confirms every order. If you make a mistake, you can cancel it easily. Okay. So this amazing, innovative idea led them to increase sales in 500%, and they were bought by an American company. The, the innovation was bought by an American company. They became hugely rich out of a $9,000 budget idea. What do those three ideas share in common? They all do a very similar act of innovating, act of creating something out from the old existing system into a new one. And it has nothing to do, it has to do with benefits and making life of consumers easier, but those are the results, those are the consequences. The process of creativity, we define it as relocation. Relocation meaning taking one component from one system, dividing it and replacing it, relocating it into a whole new different system. So the idea of relocation is to break the fixedness that we have towards system which are complete and fixed and to break it up and to place one component from one system into another. So taking the smell from the product to the world of user to their mobile phone, taking the credit card terminal from the company to the medium, to the poster itself, and taking the order button, which is usually on the internet, on the screen, on the website of the company, taking it from the medium to the fridge, to the world of user. So when you use relocation, you actually force yourself to divide the components of any system on which you work on, and to try to find new combinations, things that you have never done before, which will surprise consumer and will serve you as a way to convey 
your brand idea in a very innovative and creative way. So thank you very much for bearing with me. We'll skip those other examples. Uh, and if you're interested, log on to our website and see maybe some other self-imposed constraints for the, this part we have seen, creative use of problem as an inherent constraint, dynamic connections and relocation as self-imposed constraint. I wish you great rest of the day here in Spikes and great innovative work uh, when you're back home. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Deminitz from Mindscape. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for taking us up to the lunch break.